wash your hands, all that good stuff, that um, all the measures that we use to kind of get out of the first surge. We've just got to do it all over again. At 721, let's uh, bring on to the show here the Chief Public Health Officer oh, of Public Health. Uh, uh, Chima, is there an, there's an echo there. What do you do again? We're going to have to get you a chair in here, though, Chima, pretty soon. <laughs> Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. So, uh, obviously, we wanted to ask about uh, uh, positive cases. We saw crazy numbers over the weekend, but I know you're still trying to figure out uh, the contact tracing on that. But I guess just initially, Chima, what can you tell us about the numbers from uh, the latter uh, part of last week and the weekend? So, um, Chris, we, were, we have been seeing um, a slight jump from the cases we had around August 6th. So, as at August 20th, we've, we've been seeing um, more than 500 cases, you know, from less than 200 that we saw at the beginning of the month. And, um, like I said, the majority of these exposures have been household exposures, but we are now seeing them in, um, in workplaces too, and um, also community contact. There's, a, there, there's very few in the healthcare settings. You know, we're seeing a, um, some, you know, onesies and twosies of um, cases in the hospital, and then we're also seeing a rise in um, the ICU numbers, which was reported um, by the Jake. You know, but we're also seeing that. Um, the, uh, there's an increase in symptomatic cases last week. In the past two weeks, sorry, we're, we're seeing an increase of um, up to 50 to 55 percent, 60 percent of um, symptomatic cases. But these are not really, you know, like serious symptoms that are putting people in the hospital. These are like basic um, COVID symptoms that people are reporting, but we're actually taking account of that count. You know, seeing what is going on in the past one month. And then um, the cases continues to rise too. We've seen um, cases rise um, in the past two weeks amongst a group of um, 0 to 11, 18 to 39, and 40 to 59. Yeah, but, but higher on the unvaccinated. It's, it's, it's close to like five times higher than those that are vaccinated. Yeah, so um, that's what we're seeing now. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to um, ask about something and just to get your take that Dr. Uh, Wynn, when he was on last week, he was mentioning that, you know, it's it we're still climbing this hill. Um, it's going to get worse uh, for us before we actually get over that hill. So uh, do you expect the numbers to just kind of increase again over the next uh, couple of weeks? I mean... Do you expect it to get um, a little worse? Uh, uh, with, uh, with, with the schools closing, that is one that is one strategy that will make the cases not increase. Because what we were seeing is that there was an increase in cases of the ineligible kids, you know, from the homes, and they were going to school. Notwithstanding that we had that wonderful plan, you know, to reopen schools, we are also cognizant of the fact that you know some people might not adhere strictly to those. Um, guidance and that could be a potential for spread so it was a good thing that the governor took the initiative to shut down the schools you know right on time because now if you look at the numbers of the of kids who are ineligible ages 11 to 11 going down you are seeing that there has been increase and what this means is that for for each of these kids they go to school and if there's any breach in these schools, definitely those other younger ones can take it back home, and then that will continue to increase the cases. But now, that group that is not eligible for vaccinated, vaccination has actually been taken out of the equation. So they're out of school. The potential gathering for, for that would in, in, increase spread you know, has been mitigated. So that is one downward trend. Also with the, the new EO, you know, directing activities in such a way that we minimize you know the level of occupancy in in the restaurants and uh, in, in in enclosed um, environments you know that would also help us get the numbers down so i'm optimistic by um, by 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 the next two weeks we're going to see a downward trend and um, if you look at the testing um 
Our testing increased in the past two weeks to almost 500 a day at Tizen and was tipping at almost 700 to 900 daily from other clinics and um, other testing facilities. Uh, as at, as at um, Saturday, we actually tested uh, um, a thousand, I think a thousand three or a thousand five people in one day, which means that you know people are actually coming out to know their status. But the good thing is that knowing your COVID status is one step. Following the non-pharmaceutical pre uh, prevention measures that are put in place is another, you know, is another uh, um, step. By by knowing that you don't have COVID, by being vaccinated, by wearing your mask, keeping your distance, basically we're going to drive down this. And, and, and I think um, it's a behavior change situation that we're in here. So, and, and you know, it's so difficult to sustain a behavior change. I'm seeing people come out to say, oh, they, they, are, un they are vaccinated people in the hospital, they are, vaccin they are unvaccinated people in the hospital, they told, they told us that you know vaccinated people will not get into the hospital. I think if, if, if you listen, you know, if, 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 you, if, you, if you listen to this and, and also look at what we've been saying out there, you can see that from the beginning, the vaccine was never said to be a kill. It was a layer of prevention to keep people out of the hospital and also to make them not severely ill. So that's why if we're, we're also looking at the symptoms, like I mentioned to you, there has been an increase in symptoms, you know, reported by individuals. And but another thing I'm, I'm, I'm looking at is, you know, this could be uh, mild symptoms from other uh, um, illnesses, but they are reported, which is okay because we are capturing it. You know, to see the number of people who are reporting symptoms who don't end up in the hospital, showing that the vaccine is working. So I think everything is working in our favor. It's just the, the you know, like we just need to have a little patience and um, and um, be consistent with our behavior change and then we'll see the end of this. Kima, can you, uh, we had a comment here, why why have 100% capacity in certain businesses if you're trying to curb the spread? Could you kind of explain that for people? Because I guess in their mind they're thinking that, oh, we can only gather this many outside of a business, but uh, we still got 100% capacity in uh, the restaurants and the bars where... Uh, we know we've seen spread at the bars. So how do you explain that logic to people who kind of scratch their head at it? Okay, so um, <laughs> if you say 10% um, 10, uh, 10 people per table at six feet in a in a restaurant or in a in a bar, right? Automatically you're cutting down the space to either 75 or to 65 percent. You know, depending on the occupancy. So what it means is that we are still trying to, first of all, separate people who are not in the same party, encourage them to wear their mask, and then and then make sure that you know they they, they follow um, public health um, measures that are in place. Because remember, at the beginning, at this time, everything was shut down. Everything was completely shut down, and everyone was complaining about you know businesses, how it's going to affect tourism, how it's going to affect businesses. The vaccines came in in December, and the reason for the vaccines is to make sure that people who people who get infected do not get very sick. But at the same time, other prevention measures were in place to make us not even get exposed to the uh, um, virus. So putting all this in place, I think at this point we, we, we actually know and understand that it is safe for those who are vaccinated, you know, using the correct measures to be safe. So cutting down the numbers is to make sure that you know we, we separate people who are who come in parties um, to, to stay with them, to stay together, but at the same time, at the same time have in place you know those measures that would mitigate against spread. So I think it's a balance. It, it is either one extreme or we we try to put in mitigation measures that would also help us open you know the island. So is either we shut down the island completely, which which the governor does not want to do, because because she's she's attentive to the fact and understands the science you know behind the vaccines and the public health measures, and then also the consequences of shutting down the island completely. So I think it's a good balance for now while we try to you know watch these numbers go down in the next two weeks. Uh Chima, are you seeing, uh, just because I've, I've heard uh, from a few different people who had COVID before, 
Are we seeing an increase in people catching COVID um, a second time? Um, we, I think um, that, that question came up last week. We only have, a, so you only have three months after you got COVID, you know, for your immunity. But still, that doesn't stop you from being infected. You know, there, there, there are chances that your body immunity will protect you at that point. But it still does not rule out the fact that you could get infected after that. So I think the people that are, the people that are catching COVID are people who are maybe, may have been way over their 90 days um, mark of their uh, um, 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 full body immunity. So I, th I think that, is, that, that should be the explanation. Uh, can people still have uh, large weddings as long as they're vaccinated or galas um, as long as they're vaccinated um, in, in the hotels? I was just curious. The, quest the question is, are they still allowed? I think the EO was clear on, um, you know, the number of people that are, the number of um, people that are supposed to be in a, in a place at a certain time and also the yeah. The EO is saying that you know we, people should attest to their vaccination status to be in those kind of gatherings. So yeah. that 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 question, I think the the EO was clear about. Um, no, 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 Chima. Um, what she's asking is what she's asking is um, uh, uh, the social gathering limits are in place. It's ten vaccinated if you're indoors, twenty five va vaccinated if you're outdoors. If you're unvaccinated, you can't gather with anyone outside of your household. But what Sabrina is saying is, for example, a ballroom right a ballroom at a hotel can operate at 100 percent capacity according to the ceo so does that mean that if you have your gathering in a ballroom you can go over the social gathering limit well we'll have to pass that to the environmental division there will be, be in a better place to answer that okay so okay. we're getting tom at eight minutes okay yeah so it wasn't clear yeah um i did want to uh, ask about because I noticed today it's antigen, rapid antigen testing now at the uh, old carnival grounds in Tizen. So you guys have switched from PCR over to the rapid anti antigen tests. So this is kind of a, a change in the testing strategy for, for public health. And also uh, last week, thank you by the way, uh, we got to do a story on how public health has uh, begun or has trained a lot of the archdiocese uh, Catholic schools and I believe some private businesses on the Binax uh, testing um, cards. Is that something that you guys are going to continue through in, in uh, training other, I guess, agencies, uh, uh, private companies? And is that all part of this new testing strategy? public health yes you know you know at the beginning of uh, you know the reality is that at the beginning of this uh, um, you know we had all the help we could you know from everyone when the island was shut down but now the island is open and part of the plan was to to uh, um, have a manpower to to increase the capacity of these organizations to do part of what public health can do and um, that way it's actually going to take off a lot of pressure from us basically in terms of um, surveillance because the the testing for the unvaccinated workers is a, is a testing strategy that is targeted at them um, surveillance we just want to make sure that these individuals do not have covid and um, and the way to do it is just to do the weekly testing and we actually ask um, companies or entities who are interested in being trained you know to be part of that because it's a lot easier if you have the safety officer in a company who is trained to do the 15 minutes test you don't have to wait on public health or people coming to say you know public health is not bringing our results on time no the, the the challenge there is that we're testing 500 to 600 people every day and part of these people are close contacts to positive cases we have to do a pcr test we have to we have to make sure that we prioritize those ones because they are actually close contacts to positive cases. But for those who are doing the weekly surveillance, it's easy to, to, to have them do the binax right there because they, they don't have any close contact to a positive case. So it's basically surveillance. So they can actually get their test in 15 minutes and, 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 and walk away. But another challenge is that they are going to be lined up with people who are close contacts and stay in line for two hours or one hour because we have more than 500 people uh, on the line. Yeah. At the same time, 
they have to get their they have to also get their their, their resolve. So we we we're encouraging entities, we're encouraging companies that 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 can you know that can support that daily that weekly testing to come to public health so that we can train them and give them the binax for them to 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 use in their organizations. Right. And I think um, that does it does a does a, a, a nice way to put it out there. And then for the tra testing strategy for this week, from from August 9th to August 28th, we actually had a plan because we noticed the increase. We were noticing an increase in the number of cases we were having at um, in the community. So we changed our testing strategy to actually capture everyone who comes out to get tested. We 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 use the PCR to target everyone, symptomatic, asymptomatic. If you are a close contact or no 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 um, non uh, non close contact, we actually use that you know within that period to do active case finding in the community. So we ended that strategy on the 28th, but we are still moving back to what we are doing. We are still continuing the daily testing, so we didn't stop our daily testing, but we are now focusing the PCR on the close contact and um, and um, symptomatic individuals. But we're, uh, and the symptomatic individuals, then at the same time, we're using Binax for people who, you know, want to have their test um, result right there, and also targeting people who have um, symptoms too. So we test the symptomatic right there with a, with a um, Binax. If they're positive, then they're positive. But if they're negative, we still have to do a PCR because they're, they're symptomatic. So we're just using both strategies to capture, you know, um, a larger uh, 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 um, portion of the community. Right. So, so we're so not ruling out PCR. Uh -huh. So the, the Binax testing, I know when we had Mary Rhodes on from GHRA last week, she, was sa she said that, you know, the governor uh, instructed public health to contact her because she had some ideas. GHRA had, GHRA had some ideas. I think it was back in December when they presented their rapid testing plan to public health. So it kind of sounds like you guys are kind of implementing um, this whole let's train the private sector um, on on how to do these Binax testing. Is that kind of uh, where you guys are heading? Are you guys going to partner with GHRA because they have all these test kits as well? This, the, you know, like, so, uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, like, that's why, you know, coming, coming to you guys, you know, like, I was told this morning, less than 30 minutes ago to come on the show, and um, I, I was glad to come here because you guys give us the opportunity to say this. This strategy has been there since last year. We've actually, we actually have a Binax plan for, for companies, for establishment. We've actually trained people in contact tracing for establishment. We've actually traced people in outbreak monitoring. So these are things that are not reported, but we are actually working with entities. Uh, Mary Rose was trained by um, UCLF as, um, as um, uh, uh, um, an outbreak, uh, um, um, outbreak um, investigator. Uh, Julieta and some nurses from um, DOE were trained as outbreak investigators. This is, this is actually a higher level of contact investigation that we actually train these people for. Because we knew that when the island opens up, we will need the support of these individuals. The Binax training, the Binax strategy has been there since last year. So uh, um, while, while Mary Rose was telling you that um, GRA is waiting for public health to come and discuss the strategy, I told you that the Catholic school was actually getting trained. Cabras Marina was getting trained at the public health lab to actually uh, uh, implement this strategy. So it's not about telling us. It's about entities coming to say, we want to do this with you, and then we train them. So the fact that she's saying that she wants to tell us, I think no, 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 does no, not no. The, the governor fact. said that the governor told her that she was going to tell public health to meet with uh, Mary. That's what I was saying. Not not Mary was well, we saying. Been, we've, been, we've been meeting with her. So we've been meeting with her, and then we agreed to meet with her last week. But um. Look, you, you, if you see what happened all through last week, you know, with the with the with the inspections in the school, with the, with the, with the, the closing of the schools and the increase in cases, you know, we didn't have that time to meet with her, and then we're going to meet with her this week. But the the, the Binax strategy is is a strategy that is that is out there. Anyone who wants to be tested for for Binax would be, you know, public health is ready to test, 
and then give them the binary kits too, you know, to to <clears throat> to actually conduct the the testing at their site. Okay. Okay. Chima, thank you. We did have a question here. I don't even want to get into this. Do we know what type of vaccine the vaccinated patients in the hospital receive? Um, we can we can we, we can we can run that data. Uh, we can run that. Does data. it matter to you? No, but you see, the the, the 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 vaccines actually do the same thing. You know, it's it's basically designed to do the same thing. No, right, right. No vaccine is doing something different from the other. So it's more like. Um, Name brands, but yeah. the the contents are the same. Yeah. Gotcha. Thank you, Chima. Uh, we'll we'll uh, make arrangements for Wednesday because you're going to have some contact tracing info, right? Yes, yes, yes. I will, and then maybe if we if we're seeing any clusters, we can also report out on Wednesday. Right. Thank you, Chima. Thanks, Chima. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. For have a good me. week. Take yes. care. Okay. Uh, Seven forty-two. Let's keep it in the KUAM News Zoom Room and go over to the mayors as, uh, you know, this whole news about this uh, impending EO. Well, okay, to be fair, it started leaking out Saturday or Wednesday because uh, the governor through WhatsApp and Instagram had posted um, that she would uh, be announcing limitations shortly. Um, and